Yo what's up guys and welcome back to Boundary Break, the series where I get to show you an exclusive look around the outsides of your favourite maps in Rainbow Six Siege. Today we're going to be checking out Bartlett, Cafe and Fortress. Now this is the final episode of the series and normally at this point I would ask you what maps you want to see next time but there are no more maps to cover. It's been a long series and I wasn't sure I'd ever get this far but more on that a little later on. If you are new to the channel make sure you subscribe and leave a like and also let me know which has been your favourite map that we've covered in this series but for now for the final time I hope you enjoy. Without further ado I hope you enjoy. Now starting off with Bartlett, this is unironically my favourite map in the entire game. The only problem is, ever since Grim Sky, I think, maybe Operation White Noise, Ubisoft have just completely removed it from existence and you can only play it in custom games and tea hunts. I speak to a lot of people now who are relatively new to the game compared to I, who have never even heard of the map, let alone seen it, so this one's going to be a fun one. Starting off in the main gate spawn on the west side of the map, if we head over to this fence here, then we're going to try and head towards this building. Now we need to get inside before we get shot, because remember, this is America, and there's probably a very real political reason that this map is no longer in the game. <coughs> but once we are inside, we are safe and we are free to explore the grounds of the university. As you can see as we look around, there are many, many similar blocks of houses and flats, all in rows. Now ever since Covid has been a thing, university tours haven't been a thing, so I can only assume that those online virtual tours that some people have had to do would only have looked something like this. As I came to the end of the row of houses, I saw some more buildings in the distance, so I decided to go and take a look. Now unfortunately, very few of the buildings outside of the maps have had anything of interest actually inside of them, and most of them have just been hollow. But some of them do have interesting outsides, such as this one over here which if we get closer we can see almost acts like a template for lots of the logos and other clip arts that Ubisoft have been using in their map design. You may be able to spot a few of them as we continue. As I went on, there were a few more cool looking buildings with weird shapes and cool designs, but unfortunately, like the others, they were hollow and there's not really much to them. A lot of the map design that Ubisoft put on the outsides is really just there for an aerial point of view, so the background isn't just a long, flat plane of grass. But still, it's nice to see that they at least put some effort in. I began to head back down the main street outside of the map, taking a look at all of the buildings on the side of the road. It was quite a nice short little walk until I realised I was going to head back into the area which I would just instantly die in, so I took a little detour. Now the inside of some of these buildings were actually quite cool, although there's not much to them it's still kind of interesting to see what's inside. We can get an even better view of the main street if we head up and over to get an aerial perspective. After that I decided to go to the north side of the map so I could explore over on the other side. After we get past more of these blocks of flats we can head out into the abyss. Now as usual, this is where the ground of the map begins to just disappear and we have lots of floating buildings as we get further and further away. Now I've never been sure why these buildings are here, as especially on some maps which are really really big. Even if you are on top of the roof on the main map to try and get as far of a view as you can, I don't think you'd still ever see any of these. My working theory is it's more of just a playground for the Ubisoft map designers to experiment with different designs of buildings which they'll put further and closer into the map. That's pretty much everything for Bartlett so let's head over to the next map. The next map is of course Cafe, which is quite a popular one for both the spawn peekers and the ranked players. It's probably one of the best jobs Ubisoft have done at reworking a map, and we don't talk about Hereford. It's been in the map pool consistently for a very long time in unranked and ranked, and is one of the mainstays of the game, so let's go take a look. Now starting off on the main street by the Christmas market spawn, if we head over this fence we're going to need to very quickly make a run across the river so we don't drown, but once we're out the other side we can freely explore down the river. I headed down alongside these buildings on my left and right, and I didn't make it very far until I saw this building here which seemed very surprised to see me. It seemed to have tried to give me a warning which I did not heed because as soon as I ran past I died. 
This constant dying seemed to be a common theme because as cool as these buildings were, and these buildings were very cool, I couldn't get close enough without dying. It seems that similar to Presidential Plane which we covered a few episodes ago, the very small boundary size means I can't go very far before I reach the edge and just die. This was a shame because I was really looking forward to exploring Cafe as it's such a cool setting. I kept on trying but every location I went to was just a few meters away from death. Now after the disappointment of the previous map cafe, I was looking for a shining light in the darkness to save us, and that saviour was none other than Fortress. Yep, that's right, probably one of the least popular maps in the game alongside Tower and Hereford, Fortress was the saviour of this video. Introduced in Operation Wind Bastion alongside Nomads and Kaid, Fortress was one of the last new maps to be added to the game before Ubisoft decided, nope. We're just going to rework everything. It's not the most popular map, but I personally don't mind it. It's not the best, but oh my word, is it beautiful. It's absolutely fantastic, as you're going to see. Now, because this is the final map of the series, I just want to take a quick moment to thank each and every one of you if you've made it this far in the video. I've put so many hours into creating this series for you, so I really hope you have enjoyed it as much as I have. Please do leave a comment to let me know which map has been your favourite we've covered in this series, and also, if you don't mind, please leave a like as well. So for the final time, let's go take a look. Starting off on the upper roof section, it would be amiss of me not to mention the Tachanka easter egg on top of this tower at the front. It's just a small little wind dial, and it's quite a well known easter egg, but still a cool one. Next, we're gonna head to the front gate and head south outside. Now luckily, there's no you will die message. All this map is, is just wide open wilderness. I promised you beauty, and you're about to get it. Now my reaction for the first time when I headed over to this cliff was just complete awe. I was so surprised that there was this much detail, this much life, and this much beauty in one of the most hated maps in the entire game. I kept on going further over to the other side of the cliff this time, and it was just the same, just as beautiful. By far one of the best maps that Ubisoft have created, and that's controversial. If we keep making our way over to the other side of this river, we can get to this small town or civilization area. There are so many small and detailed little huts, walls, and also this larger fortress-like structure in the back. If we head back over now on the east side of the map, we can see more of the same beautiful landscape, lots of fields, trees, and wilderness, as well as this main feature of a waterfall just ahead of us. I headed over to have a closer look, and after a quick little shower break, I was good to carry on. I kept on going further into the wilderness, away from the map, whilst at the same time I kept thinking how beautiful it was. It was also then when I realised that Fortress is actually on an island, which when you think about it, kind of makes sense. I carried on down the river to see just how far I could go, and the answer was, not very far, as I died for the final time, which rounded out the series.